You love God with everything you are. And you love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two, you can hang all the law and all the prophets. It's the fulfillment. Become in love. Make no mistake about it. It doesn't seek its own. It takes no account of the wrong done to it. Watch. This is, this is how we know that we haven't pursued love that much. We've pursued blessing. We pursue provision. We pursue protection. Oh, we're good at pursuing them. But we haven't pursued love that much because it keeps no record of wrong. And man, we got the stories memorized. And if you counsel in here, I don't know who counsels, but if you counsel in here, you'll find that almost every appointment, 90, high 90% of the appointments is people struggling with people. And it proves we haven't pursued and become love because it's people struggling with people. Marriage fallouts, communication fallouts, can't even not agree without animosity because we need you to agree because how dare you not agree with me? We're offended if they don't agree. So there's animosity in the disagreement. We can't even disagree peaceably. Ain't that something? Love doesn't seek its own people. It's Bible. It takes no account of the wrong done to it and keeps no record of it then what are we doing cutting people off? What are we doing? Oh, I used to hang out. Oh, I... See, because what you do is when you lose the heart of love, you lose your anointing to pray. You lose authority in prayer. You can pray all day long, but if you're praying because you're hurt, I don't think I can show you and you can't show me any scripture where those prayers are in the bowl of incense because they're amongst, amidst your own motive, your own desire. He says, there's times you pray and receive nothing because you ask amiss your own. My wife prayed for me for 13 years, people, 13 years, and I didn't change. I probably got worse. She took them kids to church, and she cried, and she prayed, and she looked like that good Christian woman. And then we finally, I just ran her out of gas. I burned her battery dry. And she said, I can't do this anymore. And I arrogantly said, great. Because I've been messing around long enough with you and I need to move on. And I was brutal and I was heartless and I was self-centered and I was lost. And we were splitting up and she said to God, and I'm done with you. I prayed to you for 13 years. 13 years I prayed to you and you've done nothing. You've allowed me and these children to suffer through hell and you've done nothing. I'm done with you too. She's walked off into darkness, just said, I'm done with the Lord. Five months later, I had a dramatic encounter with God. Five whole months later, my life changed. It's never been the same. When she found out, she got so mad, so hurt, so offended. She said, now he wants to get saved. After all this, and I've been praying and taking them kids to church, and now I've moved in this direction, and he wants to pull this, trying to get the whole family to side with him, like he's the good guy with the halo emoji guy, you know? She's mad. I mean, she's mad. So I'm saved for seven weeks. My wife is fighting tooth and nail. She's doing everything she can to get a rise out of me, get something fleshy out of me. She wants me to just do something where she can go, aha, see, and, and ease her violated conscience. And she's going out of her way. But I was on a mission to become love. And love takes no account of the suffer wrong, doesn't seek its own. I was on a mission. She couldn't touch it. She'd just make a drawl on it. She didn't even know what was happening. <laughs> Push me, Jesus, come out. Push me, Jesus, come out. She's like, that ain't the old Dan. She thought she knew how to get a reaction out of the old Dan. Every time she, she got some new reaction, his name was Jesus. Seven weeks I'm saved. She's in the bathroom. She's doing her hair. She's prettying up. She's going to go somewhere. Jesus walks right in the bathroom to my wife. Amazing. Yeah, it is a wow. 
I wasn't preaching at her. I wasn't telling her, look, you should forgive me. You're the one that's been a Christian. You know you read the Bible. People change. If God forgives, why don't you forgive? You're living with an old stinky hard heart. Why don't you just... Get... I wouldn't tell her none of that. She'd have clawed my eyes out. <laughs> I wasn't saying nothing. I busted it up, and I can't fix it, but I can be changed. And I'm not going to try to do the work of Holy Spirit. I'm going to let him do what he does. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to get filled with him and just manifest Jesus. I didn't preach at her. I didn't tell her nothing. I come out of prayer one day. She's standing outside the door like this. Startled me. I opened the door, and she's standing right there because she was listening. And I said, whoa. And she's like, you make me so mad. When she actually used the word sick. You make me sick. You make me so sick. You live like the devil for 13 years. 13 years you live like the devil. And now you're in there praying like some holy man of God. I don't think so. <laughs> what do you do with that? You just keep walking. <laughs> you don't say nothing because you're the face that did that to her. You ain't the same heart. You're changed. But she sees the face, and she's like, that's that man that did that to me. But I ain't that man. So Jesus, because I ain't defending myself, I'm not insecure. I don't need her to love me. I'm having the time of my life becoming love, realizing how free it is, how the heartbreak is over, the anguish, the frustration, the insecurity, the self-consciousness, and all the stuff that came with the selfish package. All that stuff we've all called normal that's never produced life. What's it mean to deny yourself? Hello? Never make it about you again. It's the only reason a man's angry. It's the only reason a man can't forgive and forget. It's the only reason a man's discouraged. Because it's about him. If you seek first the kingdom of God, if it's all about him and his namesake, all those things change. I can teach it in the word and show you there's a salvation for your soul, your mind and emotions, because that's what took the biggest hit through separation with God. Man went from being spiritual to sensual and carnal. But my Bible says I can live by the spirit. My wife's in the bathroom. Jesus just walked in the bathroom. Confident as could be. He done yelled. She yelled at him like six and a half months before. Pumped her fist at him and walked out on him. He just walked right in the bathroom. He wasn't limping and hurt and feelings all shattered. He just walked in and said, hey, Kim. She went, <gasps> she said she was like this. <gasps> and he was there. She thinks she heard him, but she's not sure. I said, it don't matter. You heard him. She thinks it was audible, but she's not sure. Just was so real. He said, Kim, I love this. Why are you so angry at that man separating me from her anger? Can't you see? And when he said the word see, she said it was like somebody stripped and ripped something off her face. <gasps> and it was all the years of unresolved conflict, the demeaning, the lack of love, the mean, the brutal, the so. It was all that stuff that pressed on. <sighs> Can't you see? That's not even the man you're angry with. And then he said this, and I love it. In fact, Kim, that's not even the man you married. I have made him a brand new man. So guess what she does? She goes, Whoa! boom, falls on the floor. She tells me she's in a fetal position. Well, that's a good place to be when you're about to get reborn. She's curled up instinctively in the fetal position, curled up. Whoa! She's about ready to come out of this fresh womb of God into this new thing. Oh, yes, she was. That done water's breaking. Is it? Yeah? All that misery, all that unforgiveness. Imagine the wretchedness of day after day, that story. You done relived it. You done told it to your confidential people. Again and again to justify your disposition, justify your emotions. And all of a sudden, we actually buy into our story as if we have a good enough story to justify not looking like Jesus. She's in a fetal position. He hovers over her. Now he's going to make peace for that little rant she had in the bedroom. 
you let us suffer for 13, never did nothing. That little room, he hovers over, he says, hey, it's true you prayed to me for 13 years, but you have no idea and don't understand how you bound my hands and kept me from ever moving on your prayers because never once did you pray for him because you loved him. You only prayed because of your pain. It wasn't mercy. It wasn't compassion. You knew if I changed him, your day would go better. It wasn't because of love. And Kim, I can't change him and leave you there because that's never me. And I love you too much to leave you there. She told me he gave her the impression that you were reduced. Pay attention. You were reduced to another hurting wife that prays. To the hurting person, that almost sounds insensitive. To the spiritual ear, makes total sense. Because we're supposed to deny ourselves, keep no record of wrong, and not let where a man isn't called husband decide where you are. And then you're going to call Jesus Lord, and you letting the man decide where you are, who you are, and how you are, instead of the man, Jesus Christ. You're going to let what somebody doesn't see become your vision? And you're going to let where somebody isn't decide where you are? That's idolatry every time across the board. It's called letting something matter more than what matters most. Because watch this. The whole time I'm living that way, she's no less loved by God, no less called, no less anointing, has no less purpose, and is no less a light to the world unless she lets where I'm not Decide where she is. And Jesus said, I can't answer your prayer. Because at this point, it's all about you and how you feel. Now you tell me how many times we pray because of pain, conflict, hurt, frustration. We're on the job. We're praying for the boss because he long got under our skin. And we're wondering why he don't change. Because we have never had compassion on him. We've already judged him and think he's an idiot. And we've even called him a jerk while we're praying. Come on. Why would God change the man for that reason? He's not limited to you. He can change the man in some other way, but he ain't going to directly change him based on your prayer because he ain't going to get you to think that you can pray from wherever you pray from and God's going to move. God moves through love and faith works through love. You all with me?